In this video SOP, we'll take a look at the Sartorius Amber 250 HT bioreactor platform and learn how to set it up for microbial applications. Together, we will follow the instructions provided by the instrument software step by step and we'll share good practices and insights developed at the ABPDU. We'll open the Sartorius runtime software to load the experiment file that we are planning to run. For that, select the process script of interest on the computer and determine the experiment results folder. Before we can start the actual experiment, we'll have to work through a list of pre-experiment tasks. to ensure the system is clean, operational, and required labware items and consumables are loaded. Note that these steps are typically completed 12 to 24 hours prior to inoculation to allow for enough time for sensor signals to fully stabilize. Utilities and routine checks. One, ensure nitrogen, air, and oxygen gases are connected. and supplied at the correct operating pressure. Two, confirm an external condenser is installed and the chiller is turned on. Three, replace the cooling fluid for the wash pump. Four, replace the liquid handler's drip catcher pad. Five, wipe down the liquid handler tools to complete the liquid handler maintenance. And six, replace the tip collection bag to dispose of used tips from previous experiments. Tubing setup. For continuous or semi-continuous liquid additions during the experiments, such as base, acid, or any kind of feed, the Amber 250 supports up to four different liquid sources per experiment in its standard configuration. In this example, we are running a batch fermentation with one-sided pH control, therefore only one tube run is required. Notice that one tube run is shared between all bioreactors.
Connect the tube run with the base assembly bottle through a lure lock connection. Next, the software provides the option to clean and sterilize any newly installed tubing. As new tubing comes pre-sterilized, this step may be skipped. Workstation Prep A few additional steps need to be taken to prepare the workstation for the bioreactors. This includes removing the protection caps from the gas ports, the pH sensor ports, and removing the head plates from the bioreactor stations. Bioreactor Setup Bioreactors come fully assembled and pre-sterilized. Each box contains three to four reactors and a calibration data sheet for the dissolved oxygen sensors. There are two types of microbial bioreactor vessels available, the standard vessel and one with an external condenser bottle, ECB. The ECB vessel is the ABPD's default as this external condenser bottle serves as an overflow protection for hardware parts located downstream of the bioreactors. Besides the condenser bottle, both microbial bioreactor types share mostly the same features and installations. Two impellers, a pH probe, liquid addition ports, a sampling port, a head plate condenser, and installations for gases flowing in and out of the reactor. Installing the bioreactors has to be done both virtually and physically. In order to do this virtually, highlight the number of vessels required for the experiment on the runtime software. To do this physically, unwrap the bioreactor inside the cabinet. Place the vessel in the bioreactor station and the external condenser bottle in the block behind the bioreactors. Connect the pH sensor cable, then move on to the next bioreactor. Continue these steps until all bioreactors are loaded. Install the head plates to complete the bioreactor loading step. Finally, inspect the exhaust gas line for pinch points, loose connections, while ensuring the lines are positioned so that they will not interfere with the liquid handler during the experiment. For the dissolved oxygen sensor calibration, enter the information from the calibration data sheet, or enter default values and carry out an optional in-situ DO sensor calibration during a later stage of the setup. Labware Setup Labware items like tips, reagent bottles, and sample tubes need to be loaded to the workstation. Off-brand tips require a few minor modifications to the box lid to make them compatible with the liquid handler. Cut off the front clip and two hinges in the back. and load the box in one of the tip box positions. Liquid containers come in two different sizes, 175 milliliters and one liter. The one liter bottle fits into any of the three stirred bottle positions in the back of the workstation. 
Use an adapter for the 175 milliliter bottle to ensure the bottle is aligned with the center of the stirred position, or use any of the six unstirred positions on the left. Ensure the reagent bottles are assigned to the correct position on the workstation in the software. Lastly, load the sample tube racks in any of the four dedicated chilled positions. Priming. Prime the tubing and pumps by clicking on the Fill the Tube Runs task. Reduce the flow rate and increase the pump volume to ensure the lines are being filled slowly to avoid air bubbles. This process should take about 10 to 15 minutes. Post priming. Once priming is complete, connect the liquid manifolds to the bioreactor stations to ensure liquid can flow from the primed tube run into the bioreactor during the experiment. This is done by removing the wash cap, carefully removing the sticker on the liquid manifold, and securing it into place. To allow control loops to take over pump control, click Enable Automatic Pumping. Liquid Handler Initialization The last item in the pre-experiment task list is Liquid Handler Initialization. Press Start Liquid Handler and skip through the Status Report and Labware Item Checks prompts. After a short initialization procedure, the liquid handler will return to its home position and remain idle until called to do an action in the protocol. This step concludes the pre-experiment task list. Process Execution Now with the hardware configuration out of the way, the labor-intensive part of this instrument setup is complete. The user steps back and process automation is allowed to take over. The process script that can be seen on the screen can be looked at as a sequence of instructions, set points, sample timings, and control loops. Some tasks are being completed within seconds, while others take several minutes. While every experiment has very specific process requirements, the bulk of the tasks for each experiment follow a similar pattern. For example, most experiments begin with transferring growth media from reagent bottles to the bioreactors, followed by turning on control loops for temperature, pH, agitation, among others. In the following, we will see the execution of the pre-inoculation sequence for Bioreactor 4, and we will see the liquid handler in action during the bioreactor batching step. At this stage of the experiment, the bioreactor is empty. The liquid handler is instructed to transfer growth media from the reagent bottle to the bioreactor.
Once the reactor volume is equal to the target, in this case 150 milliliters, the batching is over and the process script moves on to the next tasks. Bioreactor 4 is now ready for inoculation. Now that we're familiar with the working principle of the pre-inoculation protocol, we can initiate the script for the remaining bioreactors. Note that most steps can be executed for multiple bioreactors in parallel unless those require a shared resource, like the liquid handler. Here the liquid handler will follow the first come, first serve rule. All tanks are ready for inoculation. The actual experiment can begin. Following the introduced logic, the process script now branches out into additional sequences and control loops to cover the individual aspects of the experiments. The experiment begins after acknowledging the inoculation prompt. The sequences move on and other parallel blocks are activated, which in turn trigger more events, such as bioreactor sampling. Once a sample is removed from the reactor, it is dispensed into a labeled sample tube at a specific location. The process continues until the end of fermentation. Clean up. Once the experiment is complete, the next stage is to clean up. Clean up is relatively straightforward. The bioreactors are being taken down in reverse order as they were set up. So to start, replace the manifold with the wash caps, Remove the head plates, disconnect the pH sensor cables, and take out the bioreactors. Cover the pH ports and gas ports with the protection caps. Unload any lab wear items. And wipe down the entire workstation with IPA and paper towels. Clean and sterilize the tube runs and pumps by following the instructions of the ABPDUs in wash and sterilization protocol. In essence, the tube and pumps are being flushed by air, water, IPA, and air, one fluid after the other. Note, even if the tube runs aren't being used again, it is very important to complete this step, otherwise the feed reagents will dry out and damage the pumps.
Once the CIP SIP is complete, unload the tube runs. Data export. For data export, export a summary report of the process data and close the application. 